Today is Saturday, September 24th. And I'm going to try this video vlog. I have no idea how it's going to work. <laughs> it's really strange because my lips are kind of moving at a different rate from the camera. So it's sort of throw me off a little. You might catch me kind of looking away. But um, anyway, today the kids went to their first meditation class at the Mongol Center. It is a fascinating. We just had so much fun. So I'm going to read you a little bit about Today. So, let's see what we've got. Beginning meal offering. You make offerings to the Buddha. You make offerings to the Dharma. You make offerings to the Sangha. We make offerings to all sentient beings. We vow to sever all evil. We vow to practice all virtues. We vow to liberate all sentient beings. We cherish our blessings. We finish all food in the bowl. Including meal offering, we give thanks to the Buddha, thanks to the Dharma, thanks to the Sangha. For those of you that are new to Buddhist practice or have never practiced before, the Sangha is your community of like minded individuals. So, in our case today, it would be those that were attending the monastery with us today. We give thanks to all sentient beings. Thank you to all the Sufis and Sufis of the teachers and their masters. Um, and my parents. Beginning meal offering, we make offerings to the Buddha. Meal etiquette before eating. One mind focused, two eyes lower. Three jewels offered, full of gratitude. Five good thoughts, fivefold introspection. Take the amount needed. Seven steps reviewed. Fork, spoon, rice, dish, fruit, starting, finishing. Eat all the food. No more talking. All together. My kids are so cute with their little palms together. And when Phil first went into his class, they had them to hold his hands together and sit quietly for about 10 minutes after the initial um, introduction. And then the children were learning to meditate. So when the class was over and Phil was filling me in on everything that happened, he said, Mommy, they made me close my eyes. But I know some of meditating to be still and be quiet for a boy that has ADHD well. That was miraculous, but somehow the Sufis managed to get him to do it. So that was pretty amazing. The children really enjoyed themselves. We got to do a Chinese yoga at the end of the class and I was just kicking myself because I didn't bring videos so I could show y'all what Chinese yoga is, but um next month when we have another class I'll bring it. Um here is like the syllabus but I don't know. In the mind, monastery. Okay. Kind of get the idea anyway. Um, we find in chanting and Buddhist etiquette, which is basically singing some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard. Uh, sitting and walking meditation. We had a story time. We had a break time. Their activity today. Uh, I think that was the Chinese yo yo. We had a compassion moment, dedication. We had a lunch. Oh, those two die for the best Chinese food you ever had in your life. They had these little rolls, little sesame rolls. They were kind of sweet, but they were flavored with curry. It's the best spice. Oh, fantastic. Um, we studied respect. Next week, next month, they're going to be doing kindness, and they're going to be studying harmony. And truthfulness. And these are all things that I feel like. As Americans, maybe we try to teach our children, but we don't really focus on it as much as I would like. I wish I would have had somebody to teach me that. I met somebody there today. Her name was Marina. She was fascinating. And uh, I try not to be jealous or envious, but um, she grew up in California and we had all kind of monasteries and veganistic. Um, circles and just a whole other culture that I've never had the opportunity to explore until later in life. I hate better late than that. But can you just imagine growing up being taught how to control your emotions and same in the uh we just call it monkey mind, untrained monkey mind. So like with the kids we were riding down the road yesterday and Philip has this tendency to focus on 
in permanent with an issue with him. He worries about then over a bump in the road. And he says, oh, Mommy, the whole road, but we're not, we're not even going to be able to drive on the road, and it's going to tear up our car, and then we won't have a car anymore. And this little thing that gets in his head, it just snowballs, and before you know it, chicken little the sky is falling in, the whole world is about to come to an end. Meanwhile, with Mariah, she worries about creaking at her she's always wanting something that she doesn't have. What, 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 what? Doesn't matter how much she has, how much she's done. She, uh, like the rest of us, so her gratitude to think about the things that she does have. So whatever Phil gets to glory in, and every time you have an unhappy thought, you need to replace it with a happy one immediately. Just finished going out to eat, all our bellies are full, everybody's happy, we're gonna go home, the weather is beautiful, it's Friday, you have the entire weekend to play outside, all your friends are there. You know, what to be unhappy about? So I'm sure you can find something to be happy about, to be grateful for. And Mariah says, but if you could only buy me, Mariah, which we already talked about that, what is that called? Craving grandma. So can you replace that with a happy thought? Think of something that you already have that you appreciate. I appreciate my friends. I appreciate you. And I appreciate my thoughts. Very good, Mariah. Phil, what are you happy about? That's chicken. <laughs> Chicken's like the kind of chicken that you eat, as Dad says. You kind of like the like fried chicken sort of thing. And I said, Rick, let's just go with chicken. Maybe he's thinking about the kind of get in the Easter basket. But they make him happy, that's his happy thought, so he is welcome to it, as long as it's not something that he's worried about dying or anything. He actually told me a couple of nights ago, somebody was brokenhearted and just in tears, Mommy, Bobby, what am I gonna do? What's going to happen? What about his cat died? He said, so, if you and Daddy die, what am I gonna do? I don't know how to get this disease, I don't have a phone number, I don't know. I just, what are they going to do with me? Where will I go? What will happen to me? And again, with the impermanence, don't always worry about things that aren't going to last where you're right now. But if it will make you feel better, I'll tell you what, we'll write to some time over now and we'll start practicing calmer. It's long distance and you have to dial all these extra digits and stuff, which kind of confuses it. But um, now he's got the number and we called her last night, we called her this morning. I'm sure we'll be calling two or three times a day for a while until he feels comfortable with the fact that uh, he's not going to be left alone and even if something were to happen. But here comes Mariah. Can you say hello? Hi. Can you say hi? You want to tell everybody? Can you wave hi? Tell everybody about going to the monastery today? Going to church? And I went to church. And what did you do at church? I played. Did you have fun? I had fun. Mm -hmm. I was just about to tell everybody goodbye. Can you wait bye? Bye. We'll bye. see you later.